Welcome to OK Miniatures. Today we're going to be making some battlements. These guys would be nice and modular to help build out the stone structure set that I'm working on. Currently I've made some dungeon stackers and dungeon tiles. Adding these battlements to those will help make more realistic towers. To start out with, I end up I cut three inch by one and a quarter inch pieces. You can choose to make the pieces whatever size you want. I'm using a three inch system, so I wanted the length three inches, and then I chose to make it an inch and a quarter tall because all of my bricks are five eighths of an inch tall, and that way it's nice two bricks on top of each other that matches the dungeon stacker look. When I cut these out, I made sure to have, there's two sides of foam as you may know. Um, one side takes or the two different edges with the grain and with a, against the grain. One of the edges takes texture much better, so I made that the top and bottom of the battlements. That way these surfaces have really nice texture. The sides will most likely be covered up by other pieces, so it's less critical to me that they have nice texture. Once I had the pieces cut, I went ahead and cut out the crenellations. Um, to do this, I just put my fence on my hot wire at 5 eighths of an inch, and then pushed it in, slid it over, and pulled it out. And to know where to push it in and pull it out, I made little pencil marks on my table. If you wanted, you could probably make a fancy L-shaped jig that would make a very repeatable process, but I just went with pretty reliable, not 100% accurate, but pretty decent. And a little variation isn't a bad thing in these guys. Once I had these cut, out on the hot wire, I went ahead and took my knife and beveled all the edges. Nothing too crazy here, just take some time and make sure that they all get nice chamfer on them. This helps them line up better, um, helps the, the seams look better between pieces. Also a note, you can make all these cuts with a knife. It'll probably take you much longer, and it might be a little tricky to get the crenellation bits out. Uh, it might be worth, instead of cutting them out, cutting out just bricks and gluing them on top of the base piece instead of cutting out notches. Just a consideration. After beveling the edges, I went and drew in some brick lines, first with a knife and then I went ahead and beveled those lines with my pen to make them a little bit wider and match the rest of the aesthetic of the pieces. And finally I added some texture using a rock. It might be worth considering adding texture before cutting out the crenellations. Um, they are a little bit weak and if a cut is in one of the thinner spots it's pretty easy to snap them off. It's also quite easy to fix but it's just something to be aware of. Be careful for and you gotta support these things well so that they aren't the strongest and you to put to apply texture you are applying quite a bit of force. If you do t plan to do this you still need to texture the inside and my rock isn't actually big enough to fit in between these little raised pieces. So I just took a piece of tin foil and wad wadded it up and used that to add a little bit of texture. It doesn't give quite as good texture as the stone, but it still looks pretty good. Before I go on to painting, it's an optional step of adding magnets. I like magnets. Um, they aren't really necessary, but for pieces like this, these are going to be stacked up on towers. Um, they have the potential to be very flimsy if they aren't attached directly to things. So. If you're going to do magnets, I would recommend doing it for the smaller pieces. But if you're doing it for the smaller pieces, you probably need to do it for the larger pieces to make it all worth it. Anyway, I put two magnets in the bottom and one on either side. And then I made it so that 
the magnets don't face the same way as the one right next to it. So these two are the same and these two are the same. To line up the holes I have this little cardboard jig I made. Um, RP Archive also has a nice 3D printable jig that I haven't gotten around to make printing off yet. Might need to adjust it since my foam is 5 8 of an inch thick, not half inch. I think it's four, his is 4 half inch thick. Just something to keep in mind. But using that I just line these up. They are approximately half inch in from either side and then centered on the piece. Once I had the mark made I used a small hot glue gun that I have to melt a little bit of a hole and then I took I like to spread the magnets out on a metal ruler and I can put some hot glue in the hole and then I can use the ruler to put the magnet in that way I don't have to like touch very hot glue or worry about a stick that's getting a lot of hot glue built up on it since the hot glue peels quite nicely off the ruler and then once I have them in make sure that they're facing the right way and then I can take the hot glue gun and just use the nozzle to push in that magnet a little bit and add a thin layer of hot glue over the surface. If you don't add the hot glue over the surface it's very easy for them to pull out. I'm not a huge fan of hot glue so if you have some suggestions please let me know or else I will at some point try experiment with this and find a better way that I like better. And then I was on to painting. So I started with a coat of black paint mixed with Mod Podge. Not necessarily needed but I like to do it since I'm applying the coats by hand anyway. And then I add a second layer of just black paint, and this is just to make sure that that coat is nice and opaque. There's no green foam sticking out. Once that's done, I, for my stone, I've been doing a brown dry brush followed by a gray dry brush. I think this gives a really nice look. The black and grays give a really classic sort of stone look. Uh, the brown does help make it a little bit more realistic since stone isn't actually pure gray. Uh, it is usually a bit of brown and I think I could actually go a bit darker or more heavy with the browns. but. This is what I've started with and I actually kind of like it. I'm okay with it not being super realistic. If you want to at the end you can add a wash. I like these as they are and it saves me a step, saves some drying time. But it's definitely a option if you want to do that. Now it's time to see what these things can do.
you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more modular training. I am working on making these guys a little bit better with some articulations and just an improved battlement system, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, if you haven't seen this dungeon stacker video, I would highly recommend that you check it out. It's a very good basic stone piece. It's incredibly useful. You can make all sorts of stuff with it. Would definitely recommend. With that, I'll see you in the future.